Hey, good day, everybody. This is Sports Fanatic News. I'm Joe Borick, and this is going to be our video on the Philadelphia Flyers collapsing and falling again as they lose to the Pittsburgh Penguins in a game where Sidney, Sidney Crosby, who's not Sid the Kid anymore, uh, was able to get his 50th goal against the Flyers and 500th career goal um, against the Philadelphia Flyers all in one foul swoop. Um... The Flyers yesterday were poised in the driver's seat. Drew, first of all, scored the first goal on a beautiful play that Atkinson and Lindblom were able to get the assist. Oscar looks like he's starting to uh, really get his groove back. Obviously, it took him a minute, and um, everybody, for the most part, gave him that minute to recover because he's coming off of cancer, which is one of the worst diseases on the planet, if not the worst. And then Drew uh, was able to get the scoring goal. Dominic Simone quickly answered, though, um, on a nice deflection, Crosby then got his 550th against the Flyers, and then Scott Lawton got a nice goal as it came right down, plopped right next to him, right spot at the right time. Nick Sealer got a blast goal, his first after Keith Yondel recently scored his first um, in Detroit. Now Nick Sealer gets his first with the team, and Justin Braun, after JVR missed an open net, it comes back around, it goes to Justin Braun, he's able to get his fourth of the season since it's been a minute since he was able to pot a goal. But then Jake Gensel fights away, battles away in front, and scores one of those battle goals in front of the net as he's able to um, score on the power play there. And then Chad Ruedel, I don't know how you let him sneak in behind you. He's obviously a guy that um, is usually a guy that's more of a seventh defenseman as and an AHL for Wilkes-Barre Scranton. This year, he's really developed in the sixth defenseman, but is not an offensive jump on the play guy. Or, and you let him jump up on the play, he gets it done. He scores a goal looking like Chris Letang. And then Chris Letang himself wins it in overtime for Pittsburgh. This game... I mean, with the Flyers, I didn't really know what to go through. So, so please continue to subscribe down below if you enjoy the content to help us get to 200 by the end of February, our goal for the end of February, and up above them, the easy-use widget. But this game, I didn't really know where to go because nothing surprises me anymore. So that we lose this game, I'm not going to get hyperbolic in that sense because I'm not surprised, honestly. Nothing surprises me with the tide that this team is just going this year where, like I said in the one Flyers check-in I did, it was either a week ago or the two weeks ago on, this team is in free fall. So, the, the way that guys are doing positive, like you have Lindblom starting to come back, you have Lawton having a very good year, like Anthony DeMarco tweeted out, and I completely agree with him, he's part of the solution, so is Oscar in my opinion. So you have those guys doing well, Isaac Ratcliffe came up did really well, I think it was smart to actually move him up to the third line, and calf friendly, in the preview I did before the game, I talked about how it still had him on the fourth line, they actually did move him up to the third line and swapped it, so they put more speed on the fourth line with Cage, put a little bit more size on the third line with Ratcliffe, I thought Ratcliffe played well in that game and made some very nice defensive plays as well so the guys you want to see for the future play well are fine uh certain guys though that are still in the lineup for whatever reason the Connaughtons the Sewer did get a goal in this game and the Andals of the world you, we should just let the kids play because we're seeing the Ratcliffe's of the world we're seeing uh Wilman always give that get to the puck uh Pitlick-esque effort uh he's not a to the level of Tyler Pitlick at least yet but he's one of those guys that's always going to give the speed and give the the ability to try to win puck battles in that facet where not everybody seems to be motoring out there each night. They seem to kind of just be on cruise control sometimes. Wilman, Lawton, and Limblum aren't those guys, either as Ratcliffe since Pino because they're playing with jobs, or for jobs, either as Mayu since he's been up. Unfortunately, he got banged up. He's playing like a bottom six shoot on net guy or that's uh, trying that's starting to draw more shots out of the rest of the bottom six. So there's solid things, obviously. In, in in every awful thing, there's some positives, obviously, where this is an awful season for the Flyers. But this game just is a microcosm of the season. They're up 4-2. to two. All they got to do is keep a lead. They let Jake Gensel score. Okay, fine. And then of all people, you let Chad Ruedel get behind you. Chad Ruedel has developed into a good... He's been good in his entire HL career. I'm not... I'm not trying to knock him, and he's been a good defensive defenseman, but he's never been a jump-up offensive guy. You let him jump up, look like Chris Letang, then aforementioned Chris Letang wins the game. It's more at this point, for those guys I aforementioned and Carter Hart getting thrown into that grouping, I just feel bad for them because you have these guys that get caught up. They're actually playing fairly well. Wilman played a good game. Lindblom, Lawton, uh, obviously Giroux continues to play good games. That's just unquestionable. He's always going to do that. And others I mentioned, including Carter Hart, you feel bad for those guys that are playing their hearts out, playing for their jobs and playing for next year, because this is just, again, a free fall season, and it, it sucks because those guys, I don't want to say they don't deserve it because that's not the right way to put it, but like, 
they it kind of is that way. Like they don't they 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 haven't they didn't earn the loss. The defense guys like Sanheim, guys like Yondel making mistakes. That is kind of what led to the loss. Nothing to do with those aforementioned uh, guys I just mentioned uh, in this in the um. Limblums of the world, and in the uh, Lawns of the world, in the Jerus of the world, in the Ratcliffs of the world, in the Wilmans of the world. So, I think it uh, really, really is what it is. And then putting the fourth line out again makes no sense. We have to stop doing that old school move of putting the fourth line out after you score a goal. That's a move that worked ten years ago. It doesn't work anymore. Wake up, Flyers, and realize that's the case. But anyway, this has been a reaction to the Philadelphia Flyers falling to the Pittsburgh Penguins 5 to 4 in a abysmal collapse obviously this is a season i would rather just get a great draft pick draft the Slavkovsky kid or somebody else Connor Geeky um you're off anyone else um in there uh, Masar, you got a bunch of guys, uh, Juracek, Nemec, a bunch of guys, uh, Casey, if we end up getting more draft picks for Royce line and Drew, there's a lot of catch in the draft, so I want to get a bunch of good draft picks, but you always want to beat Pittsburgh, that's the thing, when you're up against your rival in Pittsburgh, even in an abysmal season, that's like a soulless win there for us fans, and they weren't able to get it done, they collapse in the end and lose another game, peace out everybody, stay safe, please continue to subscribe to help us get to 200 by the end of February, up above on these use widget, or down below on the easy to use sub button, peace out everyone.